You're doing it. Jumping out of a plane on your 40th birthday at 3,000 feet. You pull the cord and nothing. No parachute. In your defense, you are pretty drunk. Seems like a good time to ask yourself, what happens when we die? Do we go to Super Earth? Are our gambling debts paid off? Or do we become ghosts? You've all heard that the spirits of your dead relatives watch every time you masturbate. But did you know that there are a lot of dead celebrities and world leaders there too? And for the most part, they don't like what they see. But don't let those judgy phantoms interrupt your precious private time. You've got to get rid of them the only way you can, by using the, the Ghostbusters. We're knowledge experts. I'm Bruce LaPierre, this is Truck Weldon, and Gordon Phipp. I drove here. Yes, ghosts have been part of human history since the invention of dying. Whether haunting the pyramids or scaring the Assyrians into sacking ancient Babylon, they've always been there. Chasing us, possessing us, making life miserable for poor old Pac-Man. <coughs> first things first, get to know your ghost. Find out its likes and dislikes, its hobbies and pet peeves. Try to make friends with it. Once you've gained its confidence, it's time to the set whole a truth. trap. Put on a film with adult content to grab your ghost's attention. Oh, not a pornographic film, just one that adults would find stimulating. My Dinner with Andre, Leaving Las Vegas, or The Accidental Tourist. Oh, oh, the imitation game. You're gonna love this. <sighs> Now that you have its attention, it's time to pack a bag and get the hell out. Remember to pack lightly. You don't want to be weighed down. There's nothing faster than an angry ghost friend who thinks you've double-crossed it while watching the Pelican Brief. If this works, you'll be free of the ghost that's troubling you. Now kill yourself and take down the organization from the inside. Dying is a layered affair, like an onion or an affair. It may surprise you to learn that there are different levels or tiers to the life of a ghost. It also might not. I don't know you. The first time you die, you become a tier one ghost. This is the novice level. You're basically an unpaid intern until you die again and become a tier two ghost. Congratulations, you're moving up. And with your newfound status comes the ability and the duty to kill tier one ghosts. Once you die as a tier two ghost, you move on to tier three. Now you can really start making some of that fat ghost cheddar. Plus, you get a sweet ghost car. Enjoy it while it lasts. Soon enough, you die once more and move on to tier four, where you're alive again. Not only are you alive, but you're super good looking and successful, though guaranteed to die young. James Dean, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, and Joseph Gordon-Levitt are all tier four ghosts. Tiers five through seven are just your basic ghost things. Haunting, spying on people while they masturbate, watching Cider House rules. Once you reach tier eight, it's time to take your seat on Ghost Parliament. Now you can affect some real change. For the love of God, sponsor a bill to bring an end to all of this senseless haunting. I know a lot of people say that ghost democracy doesn't work, but it's the only system we have. For now. But hold on. There's a deadly catch-22 at play. Just like ice cream and cigarettes, we need sleep to live, even though it kills us. <laughs>